सब्सक्राइब कीजिए धे आई चैनल को और बेल आइकन को दबाइए लेटेस्ट वीडियो सबसे पहले देखने के लिए In this last part of Buddhist art and architecture, we will be discussing about paintings and sculptures associating with Buddhism. What separates Buddhist art from other religious symbol is that physical representations of Buddha and also his teachings which began after his death. Throughout his life, Buddha spoke on the value of respect, peace, honesty and wisdom. However, it wasn't until after his death that artist depicted his teachings as an act of contemplation and a focal point for those looking to achieve nirvana. In order to convey Buddha's teachings visually, artists have used multiple strategies. The spiritual value of the stupas drove artists to create other statues and monuments that could serve as a place of worship and deep reflection for those looking to follow Buddha's path. An iconic symbolism or symbolism that represents the idea of the religious figure was the first to emerge. Some early Buddhist sculptors used the tree of enlightenment with the absence beneath it indicating the Buddha. Other sculptors convey the same message by showing the Buddha's footprint indented with the auspicious marks of his soul. Yet, others show the symbolic wheel of dharma which rolls throughout the cosmos establishing the Buddhist law. Footprints of Buddha, a horse without a rider and an empty chair are some of the best known representations of Buddha in the first century BC. During this time, the artists from India started adopting stone instead of brick, thatch, bamboo and wood. They built stone gateways and railings to the stupas and covered them with sculptures that depicted the events from the life of Buddha. Later on, some Buddhist artists portrayed the Buddha in his human form. In western India, near to Mumbai, the Ajanta Caves contain some of the ancient India's finest representational art. Around 30 rock-cut Buddhist cave monuments date roughly around the 2nd century BC. The walls of these caves have some highly refined paintings of the Buddha, the events of his life and the world around him. The 1st century AD brought new aspects to the Buddhist art. The artist started to depict Buddha in his human form and one of the first examples of this was found in the northwest India in the area known as Gandhara, the ancient name for today's Pakistan. They created young Buddha with curly hair that resembled the Roman statues of Apollo. They dressed him in the robe that covered both shoulders with heavy folds that reminded of the toga. By the second century, the philosophers of the Mahayana found that the artwork could serve as a reminder of the Buddha's teachings, the Dharma, and not just as the figure of worship. The first images of Buddha appeared during the Kushan dynasty and the time of King 
Kanishka and came to be found at two locations, Mathura and the previously mentioned Gandhara. Not talking about the sculptures, the earliest historical sculpture in India is of the modern age in the 4th or the 3rd century BC. The great Buddhist emperor Ashoka caused the erection of monolithic pillars of sandstone 30 to 40 feet high. These pillars were crowned with animal figures like the bull, lion and elephant and had them inscribed with Buddhist concepts of morality, humanity and piety which he wished his people to follow. Ashokan pillars from Laurya Nandangar in Bihar, Sanchi and Sarnath are very famous. The most remarkable one is the highly polished monolithic lion capital found at Sarnath which is now the emblem of the government of India. It represents four roaring lions back to back facing the four cardinal directions. The round abacus is decorated with four dharma chakras or wheels of law alternating with an elephant, a bull, a horse and a lion all carved with masterly skill. The abacus is supported by a bell-shaped base consisting of a lotus with a dharma chakra. It symbolized the victory of riotousness over physical force. Fragments of pillars belonging to Mauryan times and later were found at Sanchi, Sarnath, Amravati and Nagarjuna Konda as well. Another Ashokan pillar worthy of being noticed is the one at Laurya Nandangar in Bihar. Erected in the 3rd century BC, it is made of highly polished Chunar sandstone. Standing tall, it rises from the ground and has no base structure. It is surmounted by a bell-shaped inverted lotus. The abacus on it is decorated with flying geese and crowning it is a sitting lion. The pillar is an example of the engineering skill of the craftsmen of modern time. Lastly, we will talk about the paintings. Paintings which has been an accepted art since early times attained heights of excellence in Gupta period. These paintings or frescoes are to be seen in the caves of Ajanta. The entire surface of the cave is exquisitely painted and shows the high standard of painting during those times. The theme of the painting on the walls mostly is about the life of Buddha, Bodhisattvas and the Jataka stories. These topics cover a continuous narration of events like life from birth to death of humans. Every kind of human emotion is depicted here. The paintings reflect the contemporary life of the times, dresses, ornaments, culture, weapons used, even their beliefs are portrayed with life-like reality. The paintings include gods, yakshas, kinnaras, gandharvas, apsaras and human beings. The paintings depict the intense feeling for nature and an understanding of the various aspects of all living beings. The ceilings are covered with intricate designs, flowers, plants, birds, animals, fruits and people. The ground for painting was made by paving it through a rough layer of earth and sand mixed with vegetable fibers, husk and grass. A second coat of mud mixed with fine sand and fibrous vegetables. A second coat of mud mixed with fine sand and fibrous vegetable material was applied. A final finish was given with a thin coat of lime wash, glue was used as a binder. On this prepared surface, the outlines were drawn and the spaces were filled with the required colors. Some of the famous paintings are that of the Bodhisattva holding a lily in the cave one, the painting of Padmapani, the Apsaras with a turban headgear, the painting on the ceiling and the toilet scheme considered to be a masterpiece of the painter. Shades and tones of colors for various topics were kept in mind and also they were given utmost importance. Red, yellow, black, ochre, blue and gypsum were mostly used in the painting.